Hey everyone, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the very unique and quite innovative 2012 Tesla Model S Performance. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth view of the Model S. We'll go over the performance data, power it up, talk about the development a little bit, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to give a big thanks and special shout out to Planet Auto Imports, a division of the Planet Automotive Group located in Charlotte, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the very innovative and beautiful 2012 Tesla Model S Performance. And so, without further ado, let's get and start her up, let her run. Now one of the first things you notice about the Tesla when you go to open it up, is the remote fob is actually in the same silhouette as the car. The different areas of the remote correspond to what opens on the vehicle. For example, tapping the front end twice, pops the boot up front. To open up the rear hatch, hit the rear of the button twice, and vehicles equipped with the optional technology group also have a power raising lift gaze you can see here. To unlock the vehicle, hit the middle button twice, door handles automatically pop out of the vehicle, hit it once to relock it. If you hold down the middle button, it'll actually lower all four of the windows to let out some of that excess heat on a hot day. What's also pretty neat on some of the upper end models such as this one, when you approach the vehicle, it automatically detect the fob, it automatically slide out the door handles for you so you don't even have to touch the fob or the door handle itself. Otherwise to unlock, just press on the handle, It'll automatically come out and there's a touch sensor behind that automatically pops the door lock. The exterior color is now a Sierra Black and features an all black premium leather interior with red color accent piping in this particular model and Alcantara accent across the seats. And upon opening the vehicle, all the interior electronics automatically power up and there's no push button ignition or anything like that. To power on the vehicle, to get ready to drive, all you have to do is just hit the brake pedal. All of your warning lights will appear, just like in a typical car, and your speedometer will automatically display. The Model S features variable ratio speed proportional electric assist rack and pinion power steering, and it's three spoke leather wrapped steering wheel with heavy bolsters up across here, and a little bit of a flat bottom race inspired feel. Satin silver trim, highlighting around the horn ring and multifunction controls. The steering column itself is actually derived from Mercedes-Benz, so a lot of the switch gear and knobs that you see on the back will look very familiar to those individuals familiar with those brands. Now as far as the gearbox, just like many other hybrid and electric vehicles on the market today, the Tesla Model S features a one-speed direct drive automatic gearbox fit through this stalk here. To activate, just put your foot on the brake and tip it down to drive, all the way up for reverse, a little half click will put it in neutral, and then park is the button on the outside here. Once in reverse, high resolution backup screen automatically appears on the display. Now something else that's pretty amazing about the Model S's dash is the fact that it's almost completely devoid of buttons. The only two that you'll find is the hazard switch off to the left and your electronic glove box actuator to the right. That's pretty much because all of the car's systems run through this very modern 17-inch LCD touchscreen-based mobile media navigation interface. It does more than just that though, it basically controls all of the vehicle settings from headlights to the way it performs, the adjustable air suspension, you name it, we'll go through all of it, it's an appropriate part in the video. It's an amazing piece of technology and really works kind of like a giant iPad versus a typical touchscreen unit you'd find in a normal car. So before we begin, we're going to flip on the automatic LED headlamps fog lamps, as well as the hazards. You'll notice that the light pattern actually shows up in the display as well, so you can see which systems you have activated. All four windows are fully automatic. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? Few cars this day and age are able to grab a level of attention like the Tesla Model S. I mean, sure, there are plenty of innovative car companies out there, whether across the seas or in our backyards. But in the past few years, automakers across the boards have really taken their game to new heights with pioneering advances in economy, technology, and performance. Of those three, the newest paradigm of automotive design is economy. 
With general increases in fuel prices and concerns with environmental protection, automakers have introduced a wealth of technology to retain power while boosting the economy. Of course, there is a limit with the technology and use for internal combustion engines. The 40 mile mark seems to be the magic number, but to further exceed that in this market, many manufacturers have started adopting hybrid electric technology, essentially combining a traditional combustion engine with an electric motor in a respective model. The problem with this is that it doesn't always yield a tremendous difference in mileage, even when compared to some clean diesel models. Sure, emissions are down, but somehow it still lacks something. Extended range electric vehicles such as the Chevrolet Volton's Fisker Karma allow a certain initial miles of full EV driving before an internal combustion engine kicks in to assist. The Nissan Leaf then strolled onto the block as one of the first practical full EV cars with a range almost triple that of a Chevrolet Volt and no gas engine. Of course, many more are in development are now hitting the market. While great, there's still a lot of room for improvement. The Tesla Model S is the first car of its kind. It's the first all-electric luxury sports sedan that not only looks like a sleek European hatchback, but can also seat up to seven people. When properly equipped, it can accelerate to 60 miles an hour as low as 4.4 seconds, and can drive upwards of 265 miles on a single charge. And the fact that it earned the 2013 Motor Train Car of the Year award is a true testament to engineering and passion, starting with a dream and goal to achieve a feat that no other automaker has done in a production car that blends technology, performance, luxury, and above all, economy. The Tesla Model S, unlike the Fisker Karma and other EV vehicles, delivers a premium luxury sports sedan that can perform alongside Germany's best, while retaining realistic, combustion-like electric range. The battery packs aboard many of these vehicles are heavy. Tesla combated this by implementing the extensive use of aluminum, which makes the components light and strong. It actually weighs nearly a thousand pounds less than the Fisker Karma. The body is all aluminum, as is the majority of the front and rear suspension. The double wishbone front suspension with split lower control arms and dual ball joints uses hollow cast aluminum front knuckles that weigh about 25 pounds less than conventional steel components, while the rear multi-link setup uses extruded aluminum suspension links. Extruded aluminum allows similar strength and durability as forged aluminum, but at an affordable cost. The strength and durability of the Model S has been extensively tested to exceed federal crash tests and side impacts. The rigid chassis benefits from double octagonal alloy rails that run lengthwise down the car, while high-strength lightweight steel is placed at key areas for further bracing. It also features a monotube shock absorber at each wheel, surrounded by the vehicle's active air suspension, which can be adjusted for variable heights or lowered automatically on the highway to decrease wind resistance to an astonishingly low coefficient of drag of 0.24. This Model S is rear-wheel drive with a slight rear weight bias and originally came with three different lithium-ion battery packs either a 40 kilowatt, 60 kilowatt, or 85 kilowatt pack. The one we have here is an 85 kilowatt composed of more than 7,000 battery cells with nickel cobalt aluminum cathodes, coupled to a rear mounted electric motor. The battery pack is a large four inch thick slab that forms a stress member of the floor pan, which allows the best in class interior room and comfort. It improves torsional rigidity and lowers the car's center of gravity to just 17 and a half inches, similar to that of the Ford GT supercar. 2013 drops the 40 kilowatt due to the lack of demand. Instead, a detuned version of the 60 kilowatt pack is available, but can be upgraded at any time. Base cars have a range of 140 miles, while the full 60 kilowatt cars can go 208 miles, and the range topping 85 kilowatt battery cars can go upwards of 265 miles on a single charge. The performance model is the most powerful, featuring a rear mounted, three phase, four pole, liquid cooled, 310 kilowatt AC induction motor with a copper rotor that pumps out 416 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 443 pound feet of torque available at 0 RPM with a 16,000 RPM redline. Because of the electric drivetrain, there's no powertrain lag like in a standard car. Power for the standard 60 kilowatt cars is 302 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque while the standard 85 kilowatt puts out 362 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. For the 85 kilowatt performance, 0 to 60 times are tested as low as 4 seconds, with quarter mile times of 12.4 seconds at 112.5 miles per hour. Top speed is electronically limited to 133 miles per hour. As far as charging the Model S, you'll notice there isn't a charge port on the body like a traditional gas cap. The charging port is actually located in the driver's side tail lamp and open from the screen in the dash or via a button on the charging cable. It illuminates at night so it's easily seen, will turn blue upon plugging in, and green when you connect the power cord to your 110 or 240 volt household outlet. As it reaches capacity, the LED lights will blink faster, indicating completion. The Tesla power connector is designed in-house with a variety of adapters available. They're designed in-house because they can also support the high output 480 volt supercharger. 
something the standard SAE connectors can't handle. The supercharging stations have also begun to pop up across the country that allow charging of 150 miles in 30 minutes for free. They're also available for purchase or standard with 85 kilowatt cars. With the supercharger, it can replenish the 265 miles in as little as 5 hours, or double that for the lower tier. This Model S performance features an upgraded set of asymmetrical 21-inch dark gray painted turbine alloy wheels with 8.5 inch wide wheels in front and 9 inch wide in the rear. The tires are Continental high performance summer tires measuring 245.35 in front and 265.35 in the rear. Brakes are also large, ventilated cast iron discs measuring 14 by 1.3 inches in front and 14.4 by 1.1 inches in the rear with 4 piston fixed calipers on each rotor. Braking distances from 60 miles an hour are an average of 108 feet. Overall length is 196 inches with a width of 77.3 inches and a height of 56.5 inches. Total curb weight is around 4,700 pounds depending on how equipped with a weight distribution of 47% in front and 53% in the rear. The interior of the Model S is a unique departure to your traditional luxury sports sedan. Overall, build quality is good with soft padding and stitched leather wrap in the doors and the dash. The performance also features unique carbon fiber interior trim replacing the standard wood veneer and carbon fiber rear spoiler that accentuates its sporting nature. The styling is very modern and clean. You'll notice the aluminum theme also inside the vehicle, the aluminum trails across the door panels and handle amongst the soft hand stitched leather. A few of your power accessories are also located on the door, including your windows and mirrors. Everything else is controlled via the dash screen. The seats are wrapped in supple Napa leather and are accented in unique red stitching and Alcantara inserts. They're fully adjustable via electric switches located down below with 4-way power lumbar adjustment. Overall, the seats feel great with good padding. More GT themed than Sport, and they have moderate bolstering and lateral grip with integrated side airbags. A nice wide door opening up front helps aid the entry of the driver and passenger, and you have aluminum sport pedals down below. The steering wheel is full power tilt telescoping, and the dash overall has a nice streamlined horizontal theme with all of the hand stitched leather and color accent stitching wrapping around the dash. Subtle chrome accent in around the air vents, as well as the aluminum accent in the infotainment displays and the rest of the carbon fiber bezels. Alcantara covers the headliner and pillars, and there's also an optional full panoramic sunroof. So let's go and check out the interior. Good solid panels.
Now as far as the steering wheel, your multifunction controls consist of your radio, driver information system, as well as hands-free telephone controls. Your volume is controlled by just flipping this little knob up and down to the left, but if you click it down, in the LCD display, you'll see a reconfigurable display pop up on the left and this one on the right as well. You can control the different menus that show, whether it be energy, your trip computers, navigation data if you have it active, media, or just having it blank if you wanted a more clean, simple look. And as far as the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have your hands free telephone controls and other driver info controls for the right side of the speedometer cluster. This one has a little bit more functionality to it where you can control other various vehicle settings sunroof, display brightness, fan speed, as well as climate data, as well as media source. You can customize which one displays and what the wheel controls and activating your telephone. The right hand side of the speedometer is your energy consumption as well as brake energy regeneration meter. It'll light up orange and go up towards the top as you drive and it's reflected on your energy consumption meter. When you hit the brakes it'll turn green and actually go down to show you how much energy you're regenerating through the brakes. Now this Model S features the optional studio sound package, a premium surround sound system fit through 12 speakers putting out 580 watts. There's a built-in hard drive with 16 gigabytes of storage so you can load up MP3 files, and it's also Dolby Digital DTS certified surround sound with 7.1 channels. And as you'd expect for a high-end audio system, it definitely packs a punch. <laughs> Leather accenting coming across the dash. Alcantara A pillars blend into the Alcantara headliner. And your visors are also accented in Alcantara. Auto dimming frameless rear view mirror gives a little bit of a classic touch to it. And at the top, you have your hands free Bluetooth microphone as well as your LED reading lamps. All of the interior lights are LED and are controlled from this screen as well. If you hit the control button down below, same spot you were, where you would control the exterior lighting, you would click Dome. Now as far as the mobile media system, it's actually quite simple to use, even though there's so much technology packed into this one 17 inch screen. Like I said, it basically controls every single aspect of the vehicle as far as an electronic feature goes. And what's also nice about the system as well, is that any changes to those electronic features are basically just a software update away, which are automatically sent to the vehicle from Tesla. So the car always stays up to date, and if anything changes, like memory seats or anything like that, if there's an extra feature, it just gets beamed to the system when you already have it. Now as far as vehicle controls, this is the system like I mentioned earlier that you can pretty much control just about every aspect of the vehicle from personalizable options to the way it drives. Down below is your lighting controls like I showed you earlier, as well as all of your power doors and locks. Popping the little charge port at the back, turning the vehicle's power off, as well as putting the vehicle in neutral land or activating your parking brake. Up top is where you control your sunroof, where you can either press along the right here to open, open the vent or close it or just tap the sunroof and drag to the percentage you want it open. Very simple and quite seamless. It does open up quite wide for a nice airy appearance. hit the driving tab that basically controls the adjustable air ride suspension as well as the steering stiffness. Comfort, standard, and sport. Sport will be a little bit tighter of a steering feel, give you a little bit more of a um, connection with the road, so to speak. Regenerative braking. Standard. When you let off the brake, it actually feels like a manual transmission, so the car will feel like it's slowing itself down. And basically what that's doing is capturing more energy to recharge the battery. If you don't like that or if you're used to a typical automatic transmission, 
just hit low, but you won't get as much regenerative braking. For normal automatic cars, when you let off the brake, when after you're sitting standstill, the car will actually roll a little bit. You could turn that on or off. If you're used to that, you would just hit on, but if you didn't mind it, you just turn it off and the car will stay still when you let off the brake. Traction control, up top, as well as the adjustable air ride suspension where you control, depending on if you're going over large speed bumps or driveways, or on the highway. The vehicle will actually lower itself on the highway to um, reduce the coefficient of drag and get you a little bit better efficiency as far as the charge goes. Your trip computers, display settings, and then back to the screen we were on beforehand. But that's pretty much it. Up top, in the settings tab, are all of your customizable personal options. So your garage home link, loading up apps and syncing smartphones, driver profile and memory settings, units, vehicle options, safety and security, pretty much standard systems. As far as your climate control down below, located in between the vehicle settings as well as the radio volume. Your basic controls are just laid out here including your two, um, dual zone automatic climate control with the temperature adjustments on either side as well as three stage heated seats, front and rear defrost, and hit that menu to expand a little bit more detailed climate settings including your AC, recycling, different zones, as well as your fan speed. Again, just using your finger to drag across the screen. The layout is pretty simple overall. You have two fixed menus up top here and down below. Now the two middle screens are reconfigurable between the camera, the radio, and the navigation. So depending on which options you have selected are the two that are gonna show up. So if you hit camera, it'll replace one of them. You can flip flop the screens, depending on which one you want to see priority or in navigation or radio mode, you can actually expand that to encompass the entire screen. You can also split wield other menus like energy and telephone, for example. But instead of hitting that right there, you can actually click and hold and put it in whatever quadrant that you want. The integrated Google Maps is beautiful, very high res. You can search addresses on top and it has both satellite and standard views. Not to mention real-time traffic updates. Points of interest as well as favorite places that you could set. If we go back to your media screen, this is the main screen that'll pop up with your preset stations located down below. You can click the wheel right here and just drag across the stations or seek and change the radio modes, standard XM satellite radio as well as HD radio. If you hit browse, you can go between radio, internet radio, your hard drive, iPod, auxiliary integration, as well as Bluetooth hands-free streaming of audio. Recently played as well as putting in your favorite songs. Audio adjustments are here, your balance and fade as well as equalizer and surround sound settings. And then a quick shortcut menu between the different media options. If you click on energy, you can see your energy profile, see how economical you're driving over a period of time. It also has 3G capability built in, so you can automatically pull up the internet and search and bring it full screen. Your camera, like you saw earlier, and your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair up, but you can voice dial, store contacts, and messages. In the very top, your energy data shows the charge left, scheduled charging, as well as changing the current depending on your um, specific plug or outlet requirements, you can adjust that as well. Your home link settings, as well as personalizable drivers, if you wanted to switch it or set a new one. The middle Tesla emblem will bring up the system version, as well as what model you have. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the infotainment system in the Tesla Model S. As we come down the center tunnel of the vehicle, it's all lined in carpet. It's like one big storage tray, also lined in leather. Two USB ports, as well as a 12 volt power outlet, and a storage tray underneath the nav unit. Currently, there's no covered storage bin options for the Model S, but in the middle, you have two cup holders, and chrome accented, with real carbon fiber accented trim, and leather armrests that you can slide up to cover it if you don't want to be intrusive on the cup holders. Alrighty. You're going to power her down. Just hit controls, and then power off. Simple as that. Now we're gonna check out the back seat. 
Overall back seat room is pretty average for this vehicle segment. With the raked back roof line, as well as the battery tray underneath the vehicle, headroom may be a little bit tight for individuals over 6 feet. The rear glass is also frameless, and the doors are also wrapped in the hand-stitched leather. The back seats feature the unique color accent, and Alcantara trim is the front. The floor is nice and flat, so there's plenty of room to stretch out. Your rear air vents. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now since the Model S doesn't have an engine up front, it features an additional trunk. It has around 5.3 cubic feet of cargo space, which is plenty for some bags. It also houses your fluid reservoirs for your windshield washer system. On this model, you have the optional full power liftgate out back. Open it up and you'll find around 26.3 cubic feet of cargo space with a storage bin down below the floor. Fold the second row seats down and it nearly doubles to 58.1 cubic feet, about the size of a small crossover. The Model S can also be had with a rear facing third row seat for two children, bumping passenger room up to seven people. And if you have trouble reaching the gate, you can actually program it to open it up and stop at a certain height. All you have to do is just bring it down to the height that you want, hold down the button, and you'll hear an audible chime. If you want to put it back to its factory setting, push it up back all the way, and then press the button in the same way that you did before. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments as well as the four-way power lumbar that you find on the driver's seat. Actuated glove box. Also lined in velour with LED illumination. The Tesla Model S is a pioneer into the practicality of an everyday electric vehicle. With the longest range, immense technology, and user friendly layout, it should appeal to a wide variety of potential purchasers. A car that's sure to go down to the automotive history books as a legend of American engineering. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the Tesla Model S Performance.
be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.